Now, a first report to interrogate the origin of philanthropy and volunteerism and how are they related? How positively have they been impacting communities and the world at large? We know Nigeria has benefited and is still benefiting from philanthropic gestures from foundations, non-governmental organizations, and some Western corporate and government bodies. Okay, let's pause here to get more details from this report. Volunteering is the act of an individual or group freely giving their time and labor. Many volunteers are specially trained in the areas they work, such as medicine, education, and emergency rescue services. Others serve only when their special services are needed, mostly in response to a natural disaster or such similar incidents. Volunteering allows individuals to connect with their communities and make it a better place. Stakeholders say volunteerism is a two-way thing. It can benefit volunteers and their families as much as the cause they choose to help in. This, they say, is because dedicating one's time as a volunteer helps to build connections such as making new friends, expanding social networks, and boosting existing social skills. Whoever the observers are, they are correct to have said that it is not practiced much in this part uh, of the world. And that speaks a lot even to our value system. We have uh, monetized everything. Everyone wants to have money to oppress the other. We have not been able to promote the core value of helping one another, which volunteerism really is uh, purely a communal thing. I am advancing, and I think the younger ones should advance because I've been given opportunity by the community at a particular time. So I should be able to extend from the more that I have in terms of knowledge or skill set I could decide that, okay, instead of paying 100,000, uh, sorry, instead of paying 5,000 Naira, you bring to 2,000 Naira, and I'll take you through the training for this particular thing. But most people don't volunteer, and I think the, the reason being that uh, they do not understand what it means to volunteer. But uh, if you look at it very well, yes, we do have people who volunteer. We just talked about uh, my sister Esther Zama, always there, you know, giving her time, giving her skills and all that. And uh, many more people are doing that also. Uh, if you look at the civil society organizations, actually run basically, you know, uh, with the support of volunteers. Some of us can't pay, but you see that young people come around now to volunteer. Uh, I just recall that somebody who is living in England sent me a message that she will be in Nigeria towards um, March. And that she like to volunteer, you know, as serve as a volunteer in our organization. Yes, but the number of people volunteering is really the reason we feel that people are not volunteering. Volunteers actively seek out opportunities to assist others in need. They make considerable and continuing commitments to provide assistance and sustain these commitments over extended periods of time, often at considerable personal cost. Some of these features and more make it a distinctive form of lending a hand. It's not paid for. It's just giving your service for nothing. And we are in a part of the world where things are difficult. Even people who are working find it difficult to make ends meet. So that's why it seems like the idea of um, volunteerism is alien to us. But I know it's gaining ground with NGOs, with the civil society organizations even though some of them are being abused. Some of the CSOs, and the NGOs are also abusing it. But I think we'll get there. But there is need for more publicity, enlightenment, why people should do it. But churches basically is volunteer service. I don't know much about all of things in the mosque, but I know in churches. Unlike the helping that occurs spontaneously in response to emergencies, volunteers typically seek out opportunities to help. Volunteerism is different from the obligated helping that occurs in the context of ongoing relationships because volunteers typically do not know those they help in advance and have no prior bond of obligation to help them. This, of course, is not because volunteers don't have personal issues or even reasons for minding their own businesses, but is born out of the genuine desire to give back, make an impact, and become the change they want to see in society. There's something to get back when you volunteer. You know, so it's a good culture. It's something I think Nigerians should look towards, especially the young people. You can give your time to help, you know, the elderly. You can give your time, even as a nurse, to take care of them. 
you can give your time, you know, to do one thing or the other. Society will appreciate you. You will have a kind of satisfaction that you have also contributed to the society. So generally, I think is a culture we need a lot of advocacy for people to understand what it is. I made some effort to identify these diverse personal and social motivations behind the spirit of volunteerism and philanthropy. Volunteering is something that we should do willingly at all times. We were always doing pro bono services, giving out to the needy indigent women and children without legal fees. And it came to a point, she said, Pat, you know what, why don't we just get this thing well coordinated? Let's register an NGO for this. And that was how we bettered Proactive Gender Initiative. So herself, myself, and Chizoba became the trustees. We got it registered and we started pro bono. We're always giving out volunteering services. And you know what, it paid off even beyond money. The physical cash might not be there, but the honor it comes with it, the satisfaction, the joy, you, the smile you put on people's faces can never be quantified. How do people and organizations initiate and sustain their involvement in the act of volunteerism? If I do what I'm supposed to do in my own corner, and you do what you should do in your corner, obviously in the long run will impact on the various aspects of our society. But where we are all in a hurry, we are all in a rush, to get as much as we can for ourselves, then that competitive spirit does not permit. A competition does not allow for uh, supporting the business person by you. Because if I'm in competition with, with you, I should seek for a way to crush you so I can make success of what we are all running for. In what ways can organizations enhance the recruitment, placement, and retention of volunteers and even encourage new ones to sign up? If you take, for instance, take some international reality programs uh, where people come out and they win 50 million, 60 million, and then you go to schools where people come out with first class and they don't get as much as even 20,000 naira as a reward system. What is government doing to give back to the people, to give back to society, to support? So with regards to philanthropy, and I also think that um, we have certain specialized systems where government gives back like drug revolving schemes like scholarships and all but it should be scaled up and it should be meant to encourage dignity in labor it should be encouraged to encourage people who are transparent who are honest in government it should be made to also encourage people who are poor so if i'm able to win 20 million naira by participating in a reality show. I should be able to win 10 million naira for being transparent. I should be able to get some reward system. What do you get at the National uh, Merit Award? A gold plaque and maybe a handshake. If you are so honored by your nation, there should be some form of reward also that says thank you for being a good man, for being a good man for this country. Philanthropy and volunteerism have long been important elements of the health system through building hospitals, mission houses, providing food for those that need it the most. This approach has been instrumental in such areas as improved medical care, immunization in underdeveloped countries, global health strategies, and maternal and child health services. Former U.S. President Bill Clinton, Microsoft's Bill Gates and the Rotary Club International have been major contributors towards funding and promotion of the global campaign to eradicate polymolarities, which thanks to their efforts has been successfully eradicated in Nigeria. Um, I would advise people to de-emphasize selfishness, to remain selfless, because when we go, when we answer the call of nature, you will be remembered by what you did. Who did you influence? Of what impact did you create in people? And so if people de-emphasize greed, selfishness, and um, place patriotism on national interest above any other interest, we will go far. Many developing countries, including Nigeria, have continued to be recipients of philanthropic gestures from other climes. The question is, are these nations going to remain receivers and not graduate to become givers? Nigeria can give out if we set our priorities right. We are not a poor nation. We are just a, men we are just a set of mentally poor people. 
Why is giving in Nigeria becoming limited to politicians doing political campaigns alone? What we have come to learn more practically is where you volunteer for a service. And I think that's lacking because a lot of our young people are in a hurry to succeed, in a hurry to make it. So they don't want to wait, they don't want to burn their fingers, they don't want to just learn from the ropes. The, the end result uh, is, is too quick at sight, that's what they're looking forward to. So I, I'm looking at also the place of mentorship and older people willing even to take on younger people to teach them what they need to learn. So uh, on both sides of the stick, there's a problem. There's a problem with the older people who are also impatient with young people and, and not trusting young people enough to want to allow them to learn and grow with the ropes. And the younger people on their own are also in a hurry to succeed, not willing to go through the whole hog. So we need to re-enact that. Nigeria as a nation has continued to be a trailblazer in Africa, but as what says, as individuals, communities and religious bodies do their part, more can still be done to inculcate the virtues of volunteerism and philanthropy in the country. Many say philanthropy and volunteerism are lovely ideas until such services are demanded of them. Then excuses pop up like, you know I am busy, my schedule is tight, and other similar excuses. Now, why is volunteerism not embedded in our national or even individual agenda? Well, it seems all hope is not lost. A next report by Alika Opanachi Arua has identified NGOs and some individuals given out of their limited resources. You can call them the game changers if you like. How can society emulate them? Let's allow Alika to enlighten us more. Volunteerism is the art of donating time, energy, knowledge, and skills for the benefit of other people in the community as a social responsibility and not for any financial benefit or remuneration. The success of any nation is said to depend on the involvement of young adults in socioeconomic development. Volunteers, especially at a period like this, when coronavirus pandemic is where youth unemployment is needed. Volunteers have been assisting vulnerable groups, correcting misinformation, educating children, providing essential services to the elderly, and supporting frontline health workers. As we gradually recover from the pandemic, volunteers will have a key role to play in accelerating the transition to green, inclusive, and just economies. Indeed, volunteering is the backbone of our societies. Volunteers deserve our heartfelt thanks. Volunteering is already playing a role. Uh, a role in our response to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, right from last year. Uh, we did not have adequate numbers of people that would do each and every uh, activity, play each and every role. So a lot of volunteers came in and they were brought on board in much the same way, just like we've done with the polio eradication program. We're going to be using a lot of volunteers, people who are community-based, people who will engage with community members, who will convince community members in terms of taking the vaccines, in terms of knowing where to access the vaccine. So volunteerism is very huge, and uh, we'll continue to support all of those uh, organizations, community-based organizations, non-governmental organizations that help bring volunteers into the mix of all the work that government is doing. For the youth and other members of the society, volunteering offers opportunities for self-development and provides experience and valuable ground in the practice of citizenship. With the right education for all the citizens, the large expanded youth population, experts says, could provide the continuous growth and thus sustainable development. Two things seems to be responsible for the, uh, for the downplaying of such wonderful gesture and um, let me start by saying that presently we are in a we are in an era that um, personal interests have been so much magnified more than the national interest which is also as a result of leadership that has made personal interest more than the interest of the lead so it's a symbiotic uh, frustration from the leaders I'm from the lead. But uh, because I remember 1999, if I'm not mistaken, um, this thing, what you call today civil defense, started as volunteers. And you see people trekking from here to Jabi, those in the village, trekking from just 
a very a, a reasonable distance. And when they get to the place, maybe as an NCE holder or as a graduate, the person will be sweeping the, the market, not knowing that there is a package awaiting them right inside that service, that volunteered service, until eventually the government opened it up. Today, you know you and I know how people are scrambling to, to, be, to be get employed into that very uh, uh, system or the organization. Then coming to the area of such life, getting out entirely out of our system, is uh, quite uh, disheartening that from age 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, coming up, somebody is already interested on his own. It's really is a very, very unfortunate that even the elders in the village cannot help the matter. And it's a boil down to personality, selfish interest. And I tell you that the only way we can get it right is let the leaders show us the example. I look at it as a, a service that is offered at will. Where you ask people, this is what you want to do. And you solicit people's attention to do that. Now in doing it, the person providing the services will be excited. But the challenge is that at the background, this man is not happy with himself. He's hungry. He wants to get something for the day. And then asking him to volunteer without a reward, a compensation, he will be reluctant. He will better engage his time in doing something that is more profiting than volunteering and then the services will not be paid for. So if somebody, if somebody should advocate for volunteers, is there a backup? Is there something you'll fall back to after doing the service for the day? Volunteering is a service. It must be paid for and adequately, no matter how little. Over the years, the non-profit sector in Nigeria has been increasingly active in charitable causes, which have progressed from individual charitable acts of helping the poor to more organized philanthropy, such as corporate social responsibility. While some are motivated by deep interest in solving societal problems, especially in alleviating poverty and the provision of free education and health care, others are creating a family legacy in philanthropic giving. Rotarian Abdullahi Idris is of the opinion that contribution of volunteerism to development is immeasurable in sustaining livelihoods and value base for the well-being of the people. Uh, my experiences have been both ways, both good and bad. Um, I will start with the good, um, in the sense that it's something I started from when I was younger, um, high institution, and uh, because then the environment I found myself, I sort of had people who we had like minds. Like minds in the sense that we see something wrong, we come together and say, look, we need to do something to change it. Giving somebody 10 minutes can mean a lot to that person. It could be at a point that person might be gasping for breath, a mess typing of giving that person a CPR can go a long way in ensuring that person is alive. It could be situations where you have a car accident, mere stopping and giving assistance to getting whoever is injured out of the vehicle can be a cause to make that person be alive. So the sad thing about um, our society today is we have people that their hearts have become hardened. Let me use that word. Hardened in the sense that they do not see the need to sacrifice whatever they have, no matter how little it is, to see they assist someone else, even if that is the last thing they have. Um, it so happens in society today, we have people who step up to do certain things, not because they have it all, but from the little they have, they can give a substantial quantity to at least help someone, you know, step up from wherever they are. With these views, advocacy groups feel volunteer groups should be formed at the primary, secondary, and tertiary institutions as means of promoting sustainable development. Volunteerism, uh, to me, is a manifestation of patriotism, selflessness, uh, love of others, 
which has not totally disappeared from our society, Nigeria. It may be low-key, and it varies in degrees from country to country. Some leaders, uh, they extol the virtues of volunteerism. Uh, you remember John F. Kennedy once said that, uh, don't ask of what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. That is trying to propagate the spirit of uh, you know, volunteerism. And our leaders, even our national symbols, do encourage the uh, virtues of uh, volunteerism. For instance, when you are teaching children about uh, the national anthem, the, 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 the coat of arms, this national pledge, there are certain concepts therein that you can use to promote the spirit of volunteerism. And uh, you, you, you can, you can you know, lead the children by example. You as a teacher, you get involved in some uh, activities beyond your normal official you know, duties. You come around them when they are playing games to offer one advice or the other, to offer some techniques. You know, by, by so doing, they imbibe unconsciously that spirit of, uh, you know, uh, volunteerism. They also want the mass media to promote social stories of volunteer efforts. Even when I'm part of so many organizations that we do for free, and for the past five years, I think I'll be part of such organization and will be helping our, our community as well. So, and we don't ask for anything in return, we just do it freely. And I believe that we'll have so many youth like that that they are ready to, to render their selflessness to, to help um, our community grow. Public affairs analyst Jide Ojo notes that the desire to help others or contribute to the society has been an essential aspect of human nature. He attributes the vanishing culture of volunteerism in Nigeria to loss in family values and culture. When you look at the Western world, they have this culture of volunteerism ingrained in them. Ingrained in the sense that, look at even the blood donation. People donate blood freely abroad. Here, yeah, people sell their blood. People will go to hospital to uh, donate blood, but with the expectation that they must be paid for this blood, because in their own belief, uh, they they can also the hospitals will also make money out of it. In addition, look at many of our feeder routes, many of our community routes. In days gone by, it used to be the community that would do the roads. They don't wait for government to come and fix feeder roads to people's homes and all of that. And that's how society can get better. Analysts stress that promoting volunteerism among citizens, especially the youth, is one of the basic ways of empowering them economically, socially, and psychologically. Stakeholders in volunteerism says moving the country forward requires the collective effort of all, hence the need for individual contribution to nation building. I think uh, we have something like we call community service. People want to support any activity that will uh, uh, help in uh, developing their communities, assisting your neighbors. And those days, I think uh, the um, tra uh, uh, child grooming is a, a function of, I think, community. Community come together to help in training a child. Then when you see anyone, you see any child that is misbehaving in, within your neighborhood, you try to correct the child. Thomas of the opinion that institutionalizing volunteerism in Nigeria and sensitizing the public on the benefit of voluntary services to the nation will help in promoting the spirit of volunteerism in the country. Others, on the other hand, say through exemplary acts of volunteerism from parents and guardians, children will learn to imbibe the art of volunteerism right from the childhood. Now, if we only volunteer and give in our religious institutions, our services to humanity is still limited and wanting. Why don't we take it further? to give beyond our families and friends to that stranger in need. In a world where you can be anything, it doesn't cost anything to be kind to one another. Thank you so much for watching. We hope we have inspired you to do more for those around you. I'm Lydia Samson. See you next time.